Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and we're talking about how to get to know God intimately and the power of the resurrection. And like I say all the time, we have to take the whole counsel of God, the Old and the New Testament, to understand God and see why he does what he does. And that's what we've been endeavoring to do this last, I think, a little over a year and a half. All right, but now we're talking about supernatural beings. God is a supernatural spirit. We're supernatural spirits. Jesus is a spirit. The Holy Spirit is a spirit. There's the devils and evil spirit and evil demons and spirits. And then there's the angels of God. They're spirits. And this vast, like we talked about, spiritual realm, which someday we'll be in and working together with God in the spiritual realm after this physical earth is consumed in fire. But meanwhile, we're working with God on this physical earth to working with him to fulfill his plan of redemption for mankind, for all of mankind, get as many people saved, filled the Holy Ghost, healed and delivered as possible, to, to take as many people from the kingdom of darkness and bring them over into the kingdom of light, Colossians 1.13. And that's our mission here on this earth, working with God to get as many people saved, healed, filled the Ghost, healed and delivered as possible. Praise be to God. And building God's spiritual kingdom and his spiritual house is what it's all about right now here on this earth. Now, I had mentioned in, I believe, the last session that God created only two human spirits, and that was Adam and that was Eve. And then Adam and Eve were told, it, it said here, as I get back here, and, uh, and, and the, uh, well, 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 and they shall be naked, both in nurtured. And so then we are to be fruitful and multiply. And... Um, Oh, my goodness. Well, anyway, it just left me for now. But anyway, that's the only two human spirits you created. And so, in everything in his kingdom, it was animals and everything. They, there was seed given that they could reproduce after their own kind, as you read the entire chapter 1 and 2 of Genesis. And so, it's the same with humankind. So, Adam and Eve then were entrusted with the responsibility of producing the rest of the family of God through natural process. And so then, man was to give birth to eternal personalities, to children who live as long as God lives. Now see, when, when a young man, when a man and a woman get married, and it's God's will for a husband, there's a man and a woman, male, female, that make up a, a husband and wife that make up a marriage. And then these two produce children to make up, to produce God's family. Now, I, I think what, what uh, at least I never knew until recently, uh, you know, recent years ago, but uh, that when a husband and wife decide that they're going to have a child, and of course we see the physical bodies coming together and, 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 and what have you, but actually it's, uh, it's two human spirits coming together to produce that child, and their spiritual seed that's sown into the spiritual womb of the woman. And so then the woman produces the spiritual human being and in the process clothes it with flesh. And it comes into this world clothed with flesh. And so when a man and a woman decide to have a child, the flesh that the human spirit's clothed with is temporary and it's going to die eventually and turn into dust. But they have produced a human spirit who is going to live for eternity and depending on and, and what kind of, uh, uh, on the upbringing they have with the parents could have a big influence on whether that spiritual child grows up and spends eternity in hell or heaven. Now all the way through the scriptures, the Old and New Testament, it's not the church that's to raise the children and instruct them in the ways of God. It always comes back to the husband and wife. The parents are to instruct the children in the ways of God. And so the parents have the primary responsibility of determining whether that child will go to heaven or go to hell. And that's quite a responsibility. So then we need to, you just can't, you know, you know like there's so many children without fathers. Well, see here, you have spiritual children coming into the world they don't have a father. Their father's abandoned the family. They left him for whatever reason or probably even died prematurely. But they don't have a role model as a father, as a man. And of course, that's important in a family to have a, a, a mother and a father in Jesus' name. All right. <laughs> okay. Now, 
So that's one responsibility that Adam has was created, well, well, first of all, created for intimate fellowship. Secondly, to produce God's family. Praise the Lord. Now, man also is given dominion, as we saw. And I guess I'm open here to Genesis 1, 26. And then God said, Let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Well, that's the verse I was looking for a moment ago and I went blank. <laughs> Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the earth, over every living thing that moves on the earth. Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. <laughs> Today, we have over 8 billion, be like Bravo, over 8 billion people on this planet and approaching 9 billion. Talk about filling the earth. It just started with two people, Adam and Eve. Then finally, it did get down to eight people after the Noah's flood. There was only eight. And then after of those eight people, now we're up to going on 9 billion. So you talk about be fruitful and multiply. I guess. <laughs> and then we're to have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. So, Adam then was also created to have dominion over all of the creation and ultimately to rule and reign with God in the universe. And I, of course, I have Psalms chapter 8 here. And beginning with verse 1, Psalms, oh, come on, Psalms chapter 8 and 1. O Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained or strength or ordained or strength. You have ordained or strength or perfected praise because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars which you've ordained, what is man that you're mindful of him? And the son of man that you should visit him. For you made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned with glory and honor. You've made him have dominion over the works of your hands and over all things under his feet. So, again, we will be, when our physical body, we, we rule and reign with Christ on this earth, but also when our physical bodies turn into dust, and we leave our bodies and we're born again, we're part of the family of God, we will rule and reign with him throughout eternity, throughout this entire spiritual universe. And I praise God. But meanwhile, we're also given dominion here on this earth. Adam was an under ruler and the companion of God. He was an under ruler, Psalms 8, 5. All right. And then, of course, I probably should have read, well, I still can. I'll read Hebrews chapter 2. And I'll pick it up here, beginning verse, uh, verse 5 of Hebrews chapter 2. And here we go. For he has not put the world to come as of which we speak in subjection to angels, but one testified in a certain place, saying, and here we go, he's quoting Psalms, which we just read, what is man that you are mindful of him as a son of man should take care of him? You made him little lower than angels. You've crowned him with the glory and honor, set him over the works of your hands, and have put all things in subjection under his feet. And uh, then for, he, for, in, for in that he put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him, but now we do not yet see all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for every one. And of course, through Jesus Christ, then we rule and reign with him. All right. So then, that's a good place to bring this session to a conclusion. And meanwhile, you just be blessed in everything you set your hands to do. And we'll see you in the next session. Amen. <laughs>